Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Luis, for coming to Andorra. It's an absolute pleasure to have this chat with you today. Uh, your background is, is impressive. Um, you've been leading uh, digital transformation in, in sports properties such as FIFA, Valencia. You've been with Manchester City as well. Um, your last adventure was, as, uh, was at uh, CEO of, of Eleven Sports. Um, and, you know, the topic of, of this interview is, is uh, the digital transformation in the sports industry and the whole event. Um, and you've been leading this, uh, this digital transformation process of, of those sports properties in the past. Um, so I wanted to ask you, for you, what are the biggest challenges uh, and the main steps that a sport entity should uh, make when starting these this kind of processes? Well, uh, first of all, thank you, George, for having me here, and thank you for being here as well this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here in Andorra and visit again after many years, and mm -hmm. many congratulations to all the event organizers because it's been a fantastic event. Um, I don't know how many hours we have, right? But <laughs> that is quite a long question and has a long reply. Um, but I'll try to focus on, on the basics. Of course, doing transformation in sports, it's, it's kind of a life mission uh, because it requires patience, <laughs> it takes time. Uh, in a way, when you talk about the sports industry, you're not talking about one industry. You're talking about multiple hundreds of different industries united under one umbrella. So and it's not easy um, to basically try to, to look at aggregation, trying to look um, at ways that you can basically drive with one single effort right, the entire ecosystem. Um, from my experience, and you know, of course being you know, in the organizations you, you mentioned, I'll say there is maybe four focal points that we can discuss a little bit this afternoon. So the, the first one, uh, it's basically there is, I'll say, a fear of change. Um, if you look at the nature of sports, and especially how sports has evolved over time, we know that the last 30 years um, there have been three entities that in a way have um, control, I'll say, the most important decisions and have created in a way a centralized model around, around the, the industry. And, and there we're talking about, of course, the big uh, rights holders, especially the ones that are you know, uh, driving you know, some professional sports of highest magnitude. Uh, you have as well the broadcasters and, and the media rights holders, which have been, of course, creating a model and creating a monetization stream that has been essential for the development of the industry. And of course, then you have commercial companies that have not just generated you know, financial resources, but also have pushed the brand of sports and the experience of sports you know, into, into a, a very you know, robust you know, model. But I'll say that today and in the world, of the centralized world we live today, there is already three other parties that are actually taking over, you know, this same space. And, and there is, in a way, at, at the moment, I'll say, a, a kind of a phenomenon of integration, you know, between those two groups. But I'll say that, um, you know, technology and data companies are, are within this new group um, because we know how important, you know, technology is you know, in nowadays world. Um, I think technology has been, you know, unfortunately, you know, getting some adversity from sports sometimes um, because people don't understand it. People are afraid of what it can do, if it can destroy the, the, the values, you know, of well, the inner values of, you know, institutions that sometimes have hundreds of years. Um, and, and basically, I think, um, especially the way that the technology company thinks, right, is fundamentally important because that's exactly how sports should think, right? And, about testing new ideas and prototyping and you know, developing cases and, uh, and understanding that there is a process that maybe you have 20 different ideas and there's 19 wrong and there is one that is a game changer, right? And, and so on, and sports still needs to evolve on that. But basically technology companies are uh, presenting today and especially as well data companies are presenting you know, uh, a massive opportunity for the industry to grow. Um, and, and in a way are taking a certain dominant position um, because, you know, in a way, um, it's not a football club or it's not a right soldier that have, you know, the, the, the knowledge or the understanding of the full community of football or the full community of motorsports or the, full foot, or the, the community of, of skiing of any winter sports. So basically, data companies do have, you know, a, a much bigger understanding and are much more capable at the moment, I'll say unfortunately, to, to create this um, bi-directional you know, relationship 
with the user um, and, and, and the fan. I'll say the second one, which I think is something that is very dear to me, being as well a, a talent um, agent you know, for many years, is, is basically the role, the growing role of you know, the athlete. And, and especially when we're talking today about athlete entrepreneurs, I think today we, we were exposed to many interesting examples um, here in this country of many uh, athletes that are living here, uh, many athletes that are training here. Um, and, and I think now also is a great opportunity for athletes that can build businesses here, right? Because I think it's, it's definitely today uh, an athlete sometimes has exactly the same raw design as an entrepreneur because in a way he has to deal with competition, you know, fearless competition, you know, on a daily basis. He has sometimes talent, you know, most part of the times is not enough. You have to build, you know, a stiffness, you know, you have to be, you know, very robust psychologically. You have to manage highs and lows. Uh, you have to manage so many ups and downs. So, and, and, and this is like, you know, also uh, uh, early start business, right? You have exactly the same challenges. But especially today, athletes do have a voice, right? And, and, and I think this is sometimes something that scares, you know, sports, because you know, I think you, you've been seeing in a lot of different sports, you know, the advent of new player unions, um, you know, sometimes, you know, presenting, you know, different alternatives to existing, you know, uh, historical player unions and athlete unions. Um, you start to see, especially in the United States, and now hopefully in Europe also this will happen soon, Many athletes investing, you know, a lot on, on uh, entrepreneurs and startups, and uh, and I think that's you know an amazing as well opportunity, and and basically digitalization brought you know a democratization of access, right? While maybe 30 years ago was very different for our athletes sometimes to express his point of views because you know we had to use his, his media time, which was very confined to TV or or a flash interview after the game. So today, actually, an athlete, you know, can command his own channel, can really command, you know, his own voice, his own message. So it's, it's a very powerful combination. And the other very powerful combination, which come aggregated with athletes, because in a way they are very similar, are fans, right? And and I think that's another scary thing sometimes for the industry, because of course everyone wants to do the best for the fans, and, and I think as as an overall idea and concept that is true. Um, I think. Everyone sometimes is afraid to let fans take decisions or having an influence. And I think today, whatever the industry wants to control it, I think is unstoppable by, as well, some of the reasons I present for the athletes. When today, in the world of co-creation, in the world of collaboration, every fan can have a voice. Every fan you know, can have a chance of giving you know, his, his opinion. Uh, and not just one. It's millions of people giving their opinion you know, in, in the same subject, creating discussion. Uh, creating discussion with rights holders, creating discussion with institutions that run the sports. And I think that's uh, an unbelievable you know, opportunity. And, and also in the way that today we are talking about digital delivery and you know, especially digital assets. You know, and maybe you, you know, you've been following as well you know, tokens as, as uh, basically a very interesting tool you know, to, to connect fans, to give a voice to fans as well, besides just the pure digital, digital world. And I think these are the kind of tools and mechanisms that are going to allow really fans to have a bigger thing and to, and to basically own you know, more clearly an equity in, in the sports they love and with the athletes they, 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 they follow. And finally, I think there's also a, a very interesting point about you know, investors. And, and I think sports have always, in a way, uh, tried to generate their own resources and, and, and also, as you know, you know sports is always a basically uh, the redistribution mechanism, um, you know, whatever this redistribution mechanism is for you know, smaller you know, elements of the ecosystem or, you know, or is for social responsibility reasons or, or many other reasons. Um, but it you know, has always been kind of adverse you know, in terms, except to the United States being an, uh, a good example of the success of, of, inve of, of private investment. But there's always been adverse, you know, in terms to bring third parties into the sport. Of course, now, in the last years, things have changed enormously. And I think especially on an age where we're definitely moving, you know, for you know, serious participation and, 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 and for people really to look at, at the different expertise into, you know, the, the landscape of a, of a sports ecosystem, I think definitely investors can bring much more than just money, right? But they can bring, you know, other points of view. They can bring people from other businesses. 
because sports is many, as I said, is many business inside one. It's a community business, you know, is is a content business, uh, is a digital business. <laughs> so it's so many different things in one, um, and definitely we need more expertise on that. We need experts from other areas as well to come up and provide different points of view. And so I think th this this fear of this new ecosystem is definitely a massive a massive piece. I'll say. The second one, which also I think is very important, is legacy, right? And, and, and this is a difficult piece. Um, sometimes it's easy to do, you know, transformation, you know, to do uh, and to use innovation when you don't have a historical legacy, because you, you basically can more quickly, you know, uh, redesign or design an ecosystem that is fit to purpose. So when you have sometimes, you know, 20, 30 years, you know, of uh, legacy contracts, you know, you have 40 or 50 years of, you know, legacy of, you know, uh, commercial models is very difficult then when you want to do innovation at scale to change all that. Um, and, and I'm not going to, you know, give you any precise, you know, example, but, you know, a lot of the big organizations in sports today are still tied up to contracts that, you know, were not even previewing social media or not even previewing really digitalization at scale, right? And so as much as you want to change that, you know, as an uh, innovative leader and uh, innovative, you know, stakeholder, it, 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 it takes time, right? And then some time, uh, or some, some, a lot of situations, there is not enough time to do it. Um, I'll say the, the third one, which is also, you know, for me, uh, a very important one, is sometimes the misunderstanding between, you know, cooperation um, and, and, and basically interlinking everyone that has very, actually very similar interests, very similar challenges and so, in one you know, full effort together. I think, of course, we all know that sports is about competition and rivalry um, and, you know, and heroes and, you know, and fantastic rich storytelling you know, of ups and downs. Uh, and then sometimes I think sports organizations as well bring you know, that same competitiveness to actually areas where they should cooperate where they should innovate you know, together. Because one thing that I always say about sports, it's actually easy to innovate, right? Because you know, the level of innovation sometimes is actually very early. Um, and, and again, when I was uh, giving an example, you know, in Valencia, for instance, it was very interesting because when I joined the club, and it's an amazing brand, uh, but was you know, under a, a very difficult period, um, we had the oldest stadium so in, in, in the league, um, and this beautiful stadium, very special to the fans. Um, and basically all the resources we have was basically to use innovation and to transform that stadium actually on something that the, friend, that the fans could be proud again. And, um, and actually, you know, we did something, uh, I think, really interesting because then La Liga followed, you know, the Valencia Stadium uh, as, as an example to change all, all the stadium uh, footwork in Spain. Um, so I think, you know, it's just a question of really want to do it and working together, right? Because actually a good example of cooperation and collaboration was the fact that we were working side by side with La Liga on, on showcase our model and showcasing what we're doing to any other club, right? And then sometimes when you are in the dimension of a league which is very competitive, you know, uh, clubs don't really like sometimes to work together and, and when someone like uh, has more courage to advance, actually it works, right? And, and I saw that in my career so many, many times. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, and, and this is not an easy one, right? Sometimes it's very difficult uh, when you have a leader that, you know, is not a digital native, uh, when, you know, that doesn't really understand uh, sometimes, you know, how, how the new world, you know, works. So it's difficult sometimes to also have the courage and the trust to take risks, right? Because innovation do carry risks, we all know that. Um, and, and, and basically as well, because there is almost uh, a hurry up or a, a urgency to generate revenue, because you know, in sports, everything has to generate revenue, everything you do, because you know, it's a competitive ecosystem, as I said, and uh, there's always ways of you know, spending more revenue and having bigger budgets, you know, because that's something that all the sports are doing. And unfortunately, I think, because you need to have some, some more, um, uh, I'll say, clever thinking sometimes on that. But it's very difficult for the current generation, you know, sometimes to, to, to deal with, with a full-scale transformation. And it's not, let's say, that anyone is not trying to do it or is 
doing the wrong job. There's no rights and wrongs here. It's about, it's an additional challenge, right? So which I believe that when the first digital native generation will be in conditions to take over, we'll have the age and the experience and will be maybe a much more younger age. Um, because one interesting dynamic as well, you see on this again, if you look at the full sports ecosystem, um, gener is not still fit to purpose for Generation Z, but you know, now we're not no longer just focused on Generation Z, we also focus on Generation Alpha, right? And, and which sport is already you know, really driving you know, a plan to attract Generation Alpha to the ecosystem that exists today, right? And, and this is, I think, is one of the biggest challenges is how you are sports, as we know it, are going still to be fit to purpose um, in the years to come. But these are, I'll say, the four main challenges you have. Mm -hmm. um, but the opportunity is immense. Yeah. And I think, you know, that has always been the driver. Um, and I think, you know, step by step, centimeter by centimeter, because sometimes we do advance one centimeter at a time, I think, you know, just give us more strength to continue and to push and to deliver, you know, the best result in, in the shortest time possible. Yeah, I mean, as you said before, we could spend hours talking about, about this topic, yeah. and obviously there's a lot to be done in the sports industry. Um, we've, talk, we've talked about uh, different stakeholders uh, involved, so sometimes it's complicated, but let's focus on, for example, the startups. Uh, for you, which is the best model, working model, between a, a sport entity and a startup? I mean, which, which are the, commi the commitments that each of them have to take? Um, which are the gifts and gets that each of them should have in order to uh, work well? Because in the end, the sport entity is in a higher position uh, the, against the startup, which is smaller. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll try to give a, a view on the two angles, right? Because you know, I'll say that maybe there is two different angles, you know, wherever you are on, this, on the side of, of the right shoulder or the side of the startup. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say that um, today, startups do have a massive important role to play. In the, in the sports ecosystem, um, because there are things that you know only open innovation can do, right? And again, we know this from many businesses. We know this from countries. Open innovation really allows you to understand, you know, problems much more deep. Um, you know, for people that are not so involved on the day-to-day -day operation, on the day-to-day -day problems, that have a different, you know, perspective. And and I think. Um, being poor entrepreneurs and, and presenting, you know, sometimes very innovative approaches to, you know, historical problems or new problems or even problems that the industry sometimes doesn't even realize they are going to have or to be a problem in a few years from them, I think is unbelievably important. So, thank God, I think uh, many right soldiers have been looking at this space, you know, wherever it is to, you know, organize you know, their own, you know, incubator, their own accelerator, but especially working with experts, you know, in, in the industry, which I think, you know, this is also very important, this collaboration spirit, because, you know, basically streamlines, you know, the time, you know, makes it going fast, makes it actually financially, you know, worthy, because um, as well, it's very difficult sometimes to find on the sports ecosystem and right shoulders budget for innovation, right? So. So I think the fact that you, you are actually sharing the effort with you know, existing entities and so do make sense. Um, and I think you know, from the startup side, there is also an interesting piece of advice, I'll say, because I, I meet hundreds of startups every year and hundreds of creators and this amazing experience. But a lot of times, and I'm not saying this is a basic design mistake, but because people are so passionate about the problem they are trying to solve, that they, 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 in a way, focus only on that problem. And that time, and a lot of times, if you don't understand what happens on the sports side, you know, that problem is only a part of a much bigger problem, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and this also comes from a thing that I, 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 I see, and I've been trying, actually, to fight that for many years. Uh, like in sports, people, you know, have resistance of working together sometimes. Sometimes, as well, startups have resistance to working together, right? And, I've been in many juries, including, you know, you know, of course, in GSIC, you know, initiatives and so. And, and I always try to incentivize, you know, different, you know, entrepreneurs to work together because sometimes you actually can build a fantastic solution out of, you know, joining up all these efforts and all these great people, great creative and, and, um, and great work that people are doing. But I think it's um, definitely, it's... Uh, an area of opportunities is an area that, you know, has a massive scalability ahead. Um, but we, we just need to learn how to work together, all of us. I think that's, you know, uh, a true collaboration spirit is fundamental. 
Totally. And you said, uh, you just said it, that you have been collaborating with us as jury members, as jury member in different startup competition and challenges. Uh, we had the pleasure of having you as well as a member of the jury in the startup challenge that we organized with, with Andorra last year. Um, and we have been talking a lot about sports entities embracing open innovation for digital transformation, but um, Andorra is, uh, is, is betting a lot on, on these kind of processes. Um, and I would like you to ask, um, how important is, is this for, uh, for, a, for a government, for a public institutions to be involved in these kind of processes and support the entrepreneurs and support the, the local businesses as well to create this ecosystem? How, how important is this kind of processes? Well, I think they are very, very important. And, <laughs> and for me, it's been great to see being here and see what uh, the government of Andorra, the courage, you know, and the vision that they have to basically look at, uh, at sports, you know, as an innovation beacon, as attracting foreign investment, attracting, you know, talent, you know, launching as well massive amount of opportunities for the, the young uh, people, you know, in this country, as well offering a, a very interesting tissue of development for the local businesses. Um, so I think it's an amazing opportunity, and we know this from, you know, many other areas, you know, in innovation. Their open innovation has, has really been the beacon of many countries around the world with proven results. Um, and I think um, when I saw uh, the minister this morning, you know, speaking as well and, and, and sharing a little bit of the plans, you know, of the strategic plans, you know, around this area, I was actually very interesting to see some of the elements, you know, there together that also I think are going to be extremely relevant for sports. You know, you, you had clearly a plan for sports and for some specific sports, but with a, a massive you know, scalability to other areas. You have athletes, um, you have blockchain, right? Which for me, you know, really will provide um, a massive power, you know, to really once and for all create digi digital monetization at scale and in a robust, consistent way in sports, which I think, you know, you, you, Andorra, I see as well as big plans this one in, in that area. Um, you know, esports, um, and we all know um, that there is already a sports metaverse that exists today. Um, again, it's still not a, at the step that will be in the 10, 15 years from now. Uh, there's still a lack of interoperability between everyone. But today already, if you are you know, a sports follower, you know, and you have your account on Facebook, you are a co-creator of content on YouTube, you play FIFA you know, in, in the EA ecosystem, um, you already have a digital self that actually is accumulating a lot of you know, rewards, is accumulating you know, a lot of you know, different interests to fulfill your time and to give you rewards for your time because time for me also is a, a massive currency for sports today. And I think what Andorra is doing for me has been refreshing. I, I really applaud you know, the courage, the vision, um, and uh, I think it's going to be very successful. And if I look where maybe you know, Andorra can be in 10, 15 years from now, you know, developing, you know, wisely, you know, this, this strategy, I think is going to be a beacon for many countries around the world. And so many congratulations for that. Luis, uh, as I said before, we could spend hours and hours listening to you, but uh, thank you very much for this amazing chat. Um, I hope we can uh, come back soon to Andorra to discuss further. Uh, and as you said, in the future 10, 15 years, uh, it's going to be super interesting to see where Andorra can get. So yeah. thank you very much for your insights, and, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, everyone.